I love mandrakes and so do you. So together we're gonna make our own Harry Potter inspired mandrakes. They're so cute. Okay. To make our little sad, chunky boys, we need to uh, do a little bit of prep work first. Now, to do that, I have mixed up my own custom colors of polymer clay. I use Super Sculpey as a base because I find it to be like a really soft and supple and easy to condition and work with polymer clay. It's really expensive, you get what you pay for, but I have definitely used cheaper polymer clays in the past that you will totally be able to use. This is just like really easy for people that don't know what they're doing, like me. Um, Sculpey 3, I use to pigment the Super Sculpey. And you can tell that I use mostly like this brown and orange and a little bit of this red and purple to get this nice spectrum of colors. And I tried to just, I don't know, make a little bit of a variety of colors, some darker colors like this brown and purple and some lighter colors that I can use as like a mid-tone and a highlight. Because Super Sculpey is really expensive, we use aluminum foil and we scrunch it up and make it into a very loose shape that we want. And then we sort of manipulate and gently work it to get the appropriate shape. Now, um, for these, I've gone for like a potato shape, really. Uh, <laughs> easy to replicate, looks good. Um, you might wanna do a couple of layers of aluminum foil just to build up its strength so you can really work it and compact it and all this sort of stuff. You're putting the, the Sculpey on top of here, so you want a really solid base to work off of. I shape the aluminum foil to fit in the pot I want to use with a little bit of clearance on each side to allow for some clay action to happen. But um, yeah, I think this is about good. Okay, a little bit of brown, a little bit of orange. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start smooshing it onto the foil. Brown over here, a little bit of brown over here. Don't be precious about it, just keep mixing. All right, now we need to make a face on it. And we do that by making very basic shapes. Like that. Something like that. Look at that. Cute, hey? Okay, this is how we get our eyes looking all right. So we want to put a little under flap on the eye, okay? This is, you know, everyone's eyes have a little under flap. We're just going to make these ones a little bit... Um, exaggerated. Look at that, two little eye flaps. <laughs> okay, now it's already starting to look more realistic. Well, he's a bit grumpy. That's fine. You know, we just, <laughs> we let the sculpture tell us what it wants to be. <laughs> and he wants to be grumpy. Okay. And we want to do sort of eyebrows on the top. I guess you'd describe them as eyebrows, but just, you know, another layer. <laughs> like that. Now what do we do? Well, this is the bit where we start highlighting the most important parts. So I use this really light pinky color to really bring out some of the really important features. And this sort of replicates how um, you would see in potatoes, if you were to cut a little bit of the skin, it would sort of shrivel up and go lighter in those areas where it sort of lost moisture and stuff. Is that, maybe I'm making that fact up. Now at the moment, it looks a little bit ridiculous, but that's okay. What we're going to do now is just start blending all these colors and shapes and forms together until it looks uh, less like a um, like a Play-Doh creation and more like uh, real life, I guess. If things don't look quite right, we can always add more material later on. And it might not be pretty at first, but the more you work it, the more it's gonna look good. It's gonna look intentional. And this is what sculpting is. It's just pushing and pulling them around material until you're happy with it. Uh, 
Now this blending step, I do this for like 45 minutes, maybe an hour. I was just pushing and pulling around the material and blending the colors together and trying to make it one homogenous, homogenous? Yeah, I think that's the word. One homogenous piece, I think it's the word. Um, and I just do this and I find a nice comfortable space in the uh, in the house, probably on the couch and I'll watch a show with my girlfriend or something like that. And I'll just blend and blend and blend. Okay, he's got a very <laughs> basic face on him now, very grumpy. Um, and hey, look, when you're making yours, don't worry too much about how particularly face-like it is because you're either gonna get two reactions. You're either gonna get someone that's like, whoa, does that thing have a face? That looks really weird. Or it's gonna be like, does that thing have a face? I can't really tell and it's really creeping me out. Both of those reactions are awesome. So look, just have fun, don't overthink it. We do need to elevate this boy a little bit by giving him a little crown thing for his like leaves and sprouts to shoot out of. And also we wanna add some warts and some texture and some variation to his surface. Okay, here are the sculpting tools that I've been using so far and will be continuing to use. This is a homemade sculpting tool. It's got green stuff on the end of it, which is like a two-part epoxy. It dries like rubber. It's really good for sculpting with because it's sort of flexible. It acts like a, like a baby version of your finger, sort of. You can commercially buy these. They're made of silicon. They come in all different durometers. I don't sculpt enough to care or work out what the differences are but that's a thing you can buy if you want to. These metal sculpting tools, they're really inexpensive. I have a hundred billion types of them. I only really care about the ones that have the knife side on. Um, that's a really handy tool when you're starting out, is just having a tool that you can sort of cut and make hard edges and stuff with. Um, this is a rake tool, and I use these, especially on these models, because uh, we want that carroty skin texture, you know, you know the one I'm talking about, how it's sort of grainy, it sort of looks like human skin a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's what I use this for. Now, I do use some tools um, that aren't actually tools. They're just improvised things I found around the place, including, but not limited to, um, where is it? Ah. This is a dinosaur tail from a dinosaur model or something. And I use it for just putting indentations into the model. Get lots, lots of variation in texture and shape and oh, really weird, but awesome texturing tool. You can also use things like alligators and lizards or fake leaves or even real potatoes. It doesn't really matter. Go hunt around your house and find some fun things to sculpt with. added this little crowny bit. That was really easy to do. I just got some light brown color and I got a little bit of the light purple and I mixed them together very roughly, made a little sausage and then pinched it out into little strips, which I could then wrap around the head like that. See, and then I would take the sculpting tool and just blend it in. Ooh. Okay, and then you get something like that and then you just sort of spread it out and sort of make it look like it's peeling away a little bit as roots are gonna come up, roots? Leaves are gonna come up from the top of it. Okay, I've got these to a point where I'm happy with them and now we're going to coat them in isopropyl alcohol. Uh, now, what isopropyl alcohol does is it just melts the surface a little bit, smooths things out, gets rid of all like the crumb bits. Hopefully we'll make our transitions a little bit nicer as well. All right, I just got these guys out of the oven, gave them a quick bake as per the Super Sculpey instructions. All polymer clays are different, so Follow the instructions, getting the baking right is important. Now, I'm going to use a very soft uh, sanding board just to scuff up some of the raised areas, just very gently. This makes 
them look a little bit more natural. It's sort of like when you're painting and you do a bit of a dry brush. This is just making the raised areas a little bit more highlighted and improves some of the like um, high contrast areas that are a little bit too much. I mean, it's only just a very gentle scrub. We're gonna add a little bit of color in using this airbrush, this single action airbrush, which just means you push down the button and paint comes out basically. Um, dark brown on the bottoms and a sort of a, I don't know, military greeny color on the top uh, where the shoots are gonna come out. To bulk out the bottom of these pots, I'm using off cuts of foam to raise up the mandrakes a little bit. And in this one, we need to cut one more. I'm just using my homemade hot wire cutter for this. It's super rough. It's gonna get covered up. He sits in there quite nicely. Also sit in there quite nicely. Okay. This is foam board, which is like a high density foam between two pieces of cardboard. And we're using it as like a top layer in here. This ice pick is good for making holes in this material. Our little planty boys need some fake leaves. The thing about fake leaves though, is they're not all created equal. Some of them are a bit crap. Now, I went to a, like a homewares shop and I bought a whole bunch for like 50 cents. And these look really nice. They come in all sorts of colors. I really like these purple ones, but you're not always that lucky. And sometimes you've just got to work with what you have. From the hardware shop, I found these sort of hedge tiles that you can buy. And some of them have these interesting colors on them. Now, we take this and by itself, it looks a bit plastic looking, but we take some spray adhesive and we just dust over it like that. You can even lay it on pretty thick. It doesn't really matter. Now by itself, this will mat things up and add texture. But for a little bit of assistance, we put some talcum powder in a cup and we just dip it in and shake it all around and let the dust cover the whole thing, get a lot of the excess off. And by itself, yeah, that doesn't look too bad, but we're gonna go back with a little bit more spray adhesive and this will help build up texture and we just dust it on. That looks even better, but now we get some water and we just rub some of it back. In comparison, this is our original. Original, matted up, nice realistic version. Original, matted up, nice realistic version. Big change, right? We can go one step further. We can use our airbrush. We get a bit of brown. Darken the inside of these leaves a little bit. You can even take a little bit of sandpaper and rub some of it back as well, just to get a little bit more variation in the texture. Good morning. I ended up, well, good night actually. I ended up staying up 
all night working on these guys and uh, ah, they just are looking awesome. But we need to put some dirt in their bases and to do that, I've collected some real dirt. Nothing looks more like dirt than dirt. So I collected some from the backyard and I threw it in the oven for, um, I don't know, I'll put it on the screen, but it baked out all the nasties and stuff. You, you really want to cook out any sort of little microorganisms or bacteria that might be in there. You don't really think about it, but dirt's actually alive. And if you put it in here, untreated, unsealed, and in the right environment, it will grow fungus and mold and all that sort of stuff. You don't want that. So you cook out the nasties and we're gonna seal it with a glue and sealer finish. There's lots of different brands of this, Mod Podge or whatever. This one's an Australian brand, I think. But uh, yeah, let's just, let's just do that. A little bit of isopropyl alcohol as well. We'll just, um, I don't know, make it better. So the isopropyl alcohol will not only help kill off bad things, but it will also um, make it a little bit moist to allow the sealer to penetrate into the dirt a little bit more without it taking an entire eternity to dry. I mean, this stuff already takes like four weeks to dry or something like that. So look, as much time as we can save, we're gonna do it. Just gonna use our hands, cause you know, that's more fun. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if dirt gets all over the model. In fact, that could be really good. Now to paint on some dirt in all the cracks and crevices, we want this quite fine. So I'm just going to use a sieve and sift out some fine dirt. A little bit of sealer, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, whole lot of little dirt particles, and we're just gonna paint those on around the place. You know, make it look like it's grown from the ground. I found some interesting public domain illustrations online and I figured, hey, I'll hack them up and turn them into some weird magical iconography and uh, botanical labels. And uh, if you want them, you can get them via my uh, treasury on Patreon, so. Yeah. I'm trying to glue this down sort of imperfectly like it's been slapped on. I also think putting it on the side is sort of bonus style points, right? <laughs> By the way, so how I aged up these labels is, you know when you're a kid and you make treasure maps and you soak paper in hot water and instant coffee and then you put it in the oven and it goes all crinkly? Yeah, that's exactly what I did. But to elevate things a little bit more, I took some candle wax, or in this case, I used beeswax and I just rubbed it on the surface. And then I took a hairdryer and I melted it into the paper. And then it sort of looks like parchment or like, maybe I'm looking too deep into this, like the botanical shop that has been selling these has tried to seal it with beeswax, because obviously they would have bees, uh, to protect the label from water or um, when they're just watering everything at once or you know protect it from dirt and all that so they can read the labels. Am I looking too deep into it? I don't know, but uh, you know, it's all narrative. I think it adds so much more. I'm just adding a dark wash in the mouth area because I want to give it a little bit more definition and make it look like it's been eating dirt. <laughs> and maybe around the eyes too, just to make them pop a little bit more, just around the pupil area in particular. As a little final last step, I've got some gloss varnish watered down about 50-50 in uh, my airbrush, which I'm just going to gloss over the surface a little bit to try to get a little bit more shine because by itself, the clay is very, very matte when it's fully cured. So maybe a little bit on the pot too because there should be some moisture coming through that pot. And a little bit on the leaves, um, just in different places, just build up that variation. 
Not so much on the underside. I don't think that will look very good. Now that I see it all together, I'm not particularly happy with some of the lighter uh, tones. So I'm just applying a flesh, like a dark flesh colored wash on the top of everything. And then I'll use water and I'll push it back just so it only glazes on the top a little bit. You know, when you're making things, it's okay to make all these little adjustments and stuff. Cause sometimes you don't see how something looks until you see how everything else has come together. You don't want to overdo it though. We really don't want it to look painted. We're just trying to get a little bit more variance. As a final little touch, I've made a little price tag because why not? Voila. Cool, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> okay, let me do fancy shots. You know, right as I thought I was done, my girlfriend suggested that the pots needed to be a little bit dirtier. I totally agree. Uh, so I'm just gonna do that with an airbrush and a bit of brown paint. I'm now using a thinner on top of the brown that I applied to sort of make it streak and run and, I don't know, look a little bit more natural. Oh, they look great. Uh. <sighs> I'm really channeling some chuff dad energy right now. <laughs> I'm so proud of my little babies. They're very, very cute. Um, yeah, please uh, hit me up if you want me to make more props. And if you have any ideas, please let me know. Um, yeah, I, I guess just leave a comment, subscribe if you want. They tell me engagement's good, but you know, you just do what you want to do. Um, ah. <laughs> I hope you make these because I am very happy. Send me pictures if you do. All right, bye.